Hi everyone, it is Dave from Colossal Fossils in Wausau, Wisconsin, and today's short educational anthropology talk is about two different species of human. One is Homo sapiens, which would be uh, you and me, and the other one is our cousins, the Neanderthals. So we'll kind of go over uh, um, differences and similarities. So we'll compare and contrast the two species, how we're the same and how we're very different, all right? So let's start off with our cousins, the Neanderthals. A Neanderthal is German for the Neander Valley. Tall equals valley, okay? So that's where the very first ones were found uh, in the 1800s. And it was at that time when humans looked at that original skeleton and said, wow, these things were hunched over and, you know, dragging their knuckles on the ground. You know, the initial um, assumption was that they were very uh, slow, unintelligent species. OK, things have changed since then. However, um, even media today um, still hasn't quite changed their mentality about that. They still think that they're the knuckle draggers and that we were very, you know, uh, much superior to the Neanderthals. That's not the case. Um, as of today, we have found so many similarities between us and them that, I mean, we share 99.8% of the same DNA, okay? We know they were separate species, kind of like African and Asian elephants, right? They're both elephants, they look similar, but we know they are different species, okay? Same thing was going on between us and the Neanderthals. Um, from a physical standpoint, Neanderthals on average were a little bit shorter than we are today. But they said that they had big barrel chests, they were much more, uh, uh, much stronger, much more muscular. If we look at the uh, skull here, the nose is a little bit wider. Their nasal passages were uh, larger than ours today because this is a species that was very, very well suited for uh, cold northern climates. Okay, We find their skeletons in Asia and Europe. So they were living up north, as they say, and uh, they have you know, the larger nasal passages. They're breathing in cold air, right? With the larger nasal passages, the larger sinuses, they're able to uh, warm that air faster before it hits the lungs, okay? That keeps their core temperature a little bit warmer. Now, they also have that really cool, uh, I'm going to take this guy's head off, okay? They have that really cool brow ridge, okay? That's something that we don't have if we compare a modern human skull with the Neanderthal. We really don't have a brow ridge at all, okay? They have a very significant one. Now, sometimes we associate that with uh, being unintelligent because if we look at, uh, let's see, our chimpanzee here, hey, they have a nice brow ridge too, okay? And we know we're smarter than chimpanzees. That's not the case here, okay? Um, it just isn't. It's just something that they had and we don't, right? So we lost that brow ridge over time. They maintained it. Um, they've got bigger jaws, okay, slightly larger teeth. Um, I think the coolest thing about the Neanderthal skull is the brain cavity, okay? Now, here's the really cool thing. A Neanderthal's brain, on average, is larger than ours, okay? Again, there's that misconception that uh, Homo sapiens was, you know, super intelligent and bigger and better than everything else on the planet, okay? Alive or dead. When we compare this thing and uh, look at these two skulls, it's quite noticeable, okay? The Neanderthal has a larger skull, okay? If you go back 20 to 50,000 years, modern humans, Homo sapiens, their brain cavity is about 1,550 cubic centimeters, okay? This guy was just over 1,700 cubic centimeters. So 1,700 cubic centimeters, um, that was the space where their brain was, okay? So they had about another 200 cubic centimeters of brain space uh, compared to uh, modern humans. Now, over the last 20,000 years or so, our brains have actually gotten smaller. Average brain size today for a human is about 1,440 cubic centimeters. 1,440, 1,450, right? So 
our brains are getting a little bit smaller by 100 cubic centimeters. That does not mean we are becoming less intelligent because um, as far as I know, um, we weren't making jet planes and putting robots on Mars like we are today, okay? So again, brain size, even though ours are a little bit smaller compared to 20,000 years ago, does not mean that we are becoming less intelligent. It's just, we're not sure, right? So those are kind of some of the uh, big differences going over that anatomical structure, okay? So again, Neanderthals, larger brains, brow ridges, bigger sinuses, barrel chested bodies, more struck, you know, more muscular, and you know, larger jaws. The similarities though, if we go from a anthropological perspective, they're really cool, okay? Again, Neanderthals were living in Northern Europe and Asia. They were making clothes. If you uh, go back a week or two ago, they, uh, there was actually a whole bunch of articles about this new finding where they found cordage or string made from plant fibers. And where they found this, uh, there weren't human, modern humans, homo sapiens weren't at this location when that string was made, okay? string was made by Neanderthals, okay? So they were making their own, they were making their own clothes. They had control of fire. They had some really cool methods of hunting woolly mammoths. There's evidence that they were um, scaring mammoths off of cliffs, okay? So they were able to converse with one another, okay? We don't know what their language was like or how complicated it may have been, um, but we know they were able to communicate with one another in some form or fashion. Okay, that's pretty fascinating if you ask me. Um, there's stone tools. If you go back 80,000 years, there was a uh, stone tool movement made, you know, started by the Neanderthals. It's called the Mousterian industry. And what it was, it was the highest um, technologically advanced stone tools that the world had ever seen. Um, for a while, you know, stone tool technology was kind of doing this. You got the Oldowan and Acheulean industries. And then the Neanderthals came along and started creating things that were uh, truly mind-boggling uh, from a technological standpoint, okay? They were better than the modern humans, the Homo sapiens at that time too, okay? They were making awls. They were making axe heads, hammers, um you know, knives, scrapers, they were beautiful tools, okay? And it was made by a different species of human, the Neanderthals. Now, uh, some other similarities, say, right? we've gone over clothing, cordage or string, uh, fire, hunting, stone tools, by golly, art, okay? And this is another thing where, you know, 20 years ago, or even a year ago, we were saying that, uh, you know, Neanderthals weren't capable of doing anything creative. Well, uh, there's a cave in Spain, maybe 10 years ago, where they found these um, crosshatch marks that were carved into the um, side of a cave, okay, where people were living. Now, when these were made... We know that Homo sapiens weren't living in Spain or in that region of Spain at the time. The only species that could have done it was the Neanderthals. And every line on that cross hatching was very deliberate. Someone was sitting there with another sharp rock, just gouge, gouge, gouge. And, you know, maybe it took 20, 30 minutes just to make one line deep enough into that cave wall. Okay, so they were making art. We know they were burying their dead, you know, intentionally burying their dead in various positions, you know, the fetal position, things like that. Um, so Neanderthals are awesome, okay? Um, in fact, you know, we know we were going to the same house parties as them because we have some Neanderthal DNA coursing through our, you know, veins right now. So anyone with Asian and European descent on average, we're talking 2 to 3% Neanderthal DNA is in us right now, which I, I think is kind of cool. And so Neanderthals weren't, you know, any smarter or dumber than modern humans. They were just like us. They were just another species. 
And if you go back, you know, 60, 100,000 years ago, there were many different species of human on the planet at one time. There were Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, the Denisovans, Homo floresiensis, maybe even uh, Homo erectus, you know, kind of there towards the end of their reign. Um, but, you know, the diversity was beautiful at that time. Um, unfortunately, you know, we're the only species of human left. Uh, so everyone on our planet today, you know, we're all in this together. Um, so anyways, uh, going on, we uh, know that humans left Africa and went into Europe about 60,000 years ago. Although there are some more recent findings that are pushing that date back even further. Um, <laughs> Even uh, modern humans, a couple of years ago, we said, okay, modern humans first came into the fossil record, um, anatomically identical modern humans, you know, 100,000 years ago. Um, just within the last year or two, they said, oh, no, it's 300,000 years ago, okay? So all these dates, all these things that we think we know, those dates are getting pushed back further and further and further. It's beautiful, okay? So the name that we have given to those first people Whenever that was, let's say it's 60,000 years ago, the name that we've given them are the Cro-Magnons. Okay? They are the first Africans to move into Europe. Okay? And they probably resemble modern Africans than uh, someone like me, you know, with a European descent. Okay? And uh, the skull that I have here is from a Cro-Magnon. And uh, Cro-Magnon is French. It means high cliff because in the 1860s, uh, there were some folks laying railroad tracks along a big rock face. And they looked up one day and saw that there was an opening up in, in that cliff. So they contacted some researchers. And the researchers came out, climbed up the cliff, went into this opening. And there they found four adult bodies laid out, intentionally buried there. Okay? So four adult humans. And they knew they had something special. Okay? That's when they saw, you know, all the, uh, you know, they were laid down in very um, deliberate positions. You know, they had their beads and, you know, other things that were left behind uh, when they died. And this is the first one. This is known as Cro-Magnon number one. Okay. Uh, it's a male about 50 years of age. And uh, we think we know how he died. If you can uh, see that big divot in his skull, that is from a fungal infection. Okay? And there's all these pits all over his skull and the rest of his body. So uh, he was hurting. Okay? That's what we think he died from. It was a fungal infection. Okay? So there was him, there were three others, and there was also an infant too. So again, Cro-Magnon. Some really neat examples. Uh, this is known as the Predmosti Mammoth. It's from the Czech Republic. And this is a, a replica. You can find these online for $10 or $15. They're really cool. The original was found at an archaeological site, dated to about 30, 35,000 years ago, okay? Uh, the Predmosti Mammoth is a woolly mammoth, and it was carved from a solid piece of woolly mammoth tusk. Now, this is not an easy thing to do, um, but they have found cro artifacts that were carved from mammoth ivory, okay? Okay. Uh, one really neat one uh, was a flute, and they figure it took about 200 hours to drill all the way through this, uh, you know, hunk of woolly mammoth tusk to make a flute and then drill all the little holes and whatnot. Uh, but this one, this is a mammoth, okay? It's, again, it's called the Predmosti Mammoth. And, you know, over time, things get a little more advanced until, you know, you're talking 10, 12,000 years ago when you start getting these Clovis points that are found all over North America, okay? These are you know, beautiful spear points. They're big. These are the kinds that take down large prey, right? Mammoths and whatever other megafauna was still around at that time. Um, bison, right? And uh, so that kind of concludes our short talk about Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to be doing some other ones rather soon here. And uh, before too long, I'm going to swing over to our museum again in Wausau, Wisconsin, and going to pick up some dinosaur bones and we'll start doing some talks about those. So until then, Dave Daniels from Colossal Fossils in Wausau, Wisconsin. Adios.